Welcome to the House Doctor. Today I'm going to show you how to install a closet made closet organizer and straighten up some of this mess we have here in this closet. Today I'm going to show you how to install a closet made Sweet Symphony closet organizer, 16 inch wide model, and it comes with the brackets. And I also got the additional kit that has shelving so you don't have to do any woodworking. And as a bonus, made in the USA. Let's get started. The first step in installing this closet organizer is to get rid of this builder grade shelving, bracket, and rod. So luckily this shelf is not screwed down so I can just lift it out of here. Now that I have the shelf, the rod, and the brackets out, all we're left with is a little bit of wood against the back of the wall. You don't necessarily have to remove this to install this organizer, but it is going to give us a cleaner install. So I'm going to pull this wood down, put the spackle of holes, and touch up the paint. Instructions. I don't think we're going to need these. So in your kit, you're going to have two sets of shelves and side pieces, just like you see here. This shelf here with nothing on it, no holes, this is the adjustable shelf. We can set that aside for now. We're not going to need it. This shelf here with the six small holes, this is the top shelf. This shelf with the four large holes, that's the bottom shelf, and then we have the two sides. So we're going to start by laying out our two sides with the unfinished edges facing each other and the finished edge facing out on both shelves. These screws, pins, these are called the cam post. We need to put two of these into each side panel, so we're going to install these first. They go in with a Phillips screwdriver. Do not use your drill or your impact to install these. They'll easily strip out in the particle board. Use a hand screwdriver. Now we're going to take four of these posts and put them in the top shelf. We'll put one in each corner. These are the cam locks and you'll notice that one of the points is a little bit longer. It has a little arrow on it. When you put these in, you want to make sure that that is pointing towards the edge of the piece. We're going to put four of these in the bottom shelf and two in each of the side panels. The way these work is the cam post that's screwed into the one part is going to go into the cam lock. and It's going to go in like this and then as you turn the cam lock, it's going to pull the other piece tight up against it. So that's why when you put these in, you need the point that has the arrow pointing towards the edge of the piece. So when you put them in, you need to make sure they're pointing that direction. And I like to test and just take an extra post and make sure it's gonna slide in all the way. If it goes in up to this point here where the threads start, then you know it's pointing the right direction. 
if you need to adjust it a little bit you can just put a screwdriver in it and give it a little twist one way or another it's better to make sure that they're all in properly before you try putting all these pieces together okay I have all the cams installed in the bottom shelf and the arrows pointing towards the outside edge I finished edges here I'm gonna put it on these two posts finished edge of my shelving is here. This is the unfinished edge. And you just take a flat screwdriver, put it into the cam, and give it a turn until it tightens up a little bit. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on these. Just turning them, they'll snug up against the cam, and you'll be nice and sturdy. We're going to get our other shelf ready this down and slide this one into place. Same thing, flat screwdriver, stick it in, turn clockwise, and that's going to tighten the shelf up. Let me spin this around so you can see how the top goes on. Always pay attention, this is the unfinished edge, we want that in the facing down. Our finished edges are here. The four posts go into the holes here. Okay, now I'm going to just tighten these four cams up. These are the T-nuts that we're going to be installing into the bottom of this unit. And we'll be screwing the leveling feet into these. You just put them in the holes in the bottom and knock them in with a hammer. These are the leveling feet. These get screwed into the T-nuts in the bottom of the unit. These caps right here are just to cover up the giant holes in the bottom of the side unit where we didn't need to install any cams. Next, we're going to take this cardboard diamond, or if you hold it this way, it's a cardboard square. We're going to snap it apart little cardboard triangles and now we have our gussets this is going to stiffen the unit up set them like this unfinished side of the cardboard facing back and we're just going to put a few nails in here there's holes already pre-punched into the cardboard where you should put the nails Now we have our first unit put together. It's not as fancy as the one that Paul Tran built, but it's nice and sturdy. It's going to be screwed to the wall. There's no woodworking involved. Just attach it to the wall and it'll be good to go. I just have to put the other one together the exact same way. The only difference is it's not going to have the leveling feet at the bottom, but everything else is identical. So let me get the other one put together. I have the two sections put together. Granted, this isn't going to be a walk-in closet remodel like Paul Tran did, but these are plenty strong enough. They're nice and sturdy with the gussets in the back. Now all we have to do is attach it to the wall. When you put this unit in, it needs to be attached to the wall. Ideally, you want to be able to attach it to a stud. So I use a tool like this. It's one of the magnets for working the toddler locks. You just run it along the wall until you can come across where there's a screw holding the drywall in and it'll stick to wherever there's a screw and it sticks right there so I know we have a stud running up and down right here. So let's see how that works. That's going to be fine. It puts me almost right in the center of the closet where I want to be. You don't necessarily have to put it in the middle. but for good closet organization, I'm going to put it right here in the middle. These are the anchors that they give you to attach the unit to a wall if you're not able to screw into a stud. I recommend you don't use these. I've tried them a couple of times. They never really seem to hold well, especially in older drywall. So we'll get rid of those. 
If you do have to attach where there's not a stud, use something like this. This is called an easy anchor. I'll put a link in the description. You screw this into the drywall and then when you take the screw, it pushes in and you flip up this bar and as the screw tightens, it pulls this bar tight up against the back of the drywall. This is going to hold much better than those plastic anchors. When you do go to attach this to the wall, keep in mind what's behind the wall, especially if you're in a bedroom upstairs. Know where the bathroom is. Have an idea where the plumbing is. You don't want to take one of these easy anchors, screw it into the wall and hit a water line or screw into the back of a medicine cabinet that's inset into the wall. They only go in about an inch and a half into the wall, but that's enough to hit a water line or screw into the back of a medicine cabinet. Just keep that in mind. That's not going anywhere. This is where those little feet come into play. I need to just adjust the left side up a little bit so the unit's going to be nice and plumb. You use these little short screws to attach the brackets to the inside of the unit. I recommend not using a drill, use a hand screwdriver, that way they won't strip out in the sides of the shelf. Connect the two units together, you use some small wooden dowels and just tap them in place. You don't have to pound them in very hard. You'll hear the difference when they bottom out. Now we just use two more brackets to attach the top section to the wall. Next I'm going to install the brackets for the optional shelves. They come these white brackets and they have a little rounded part here on the front. That goes towards the outside away from the wall. And when you put these in, don't push them up all the way tight against the drywall. That's going to make it hard to get the shelves in. Just pull them forward just a little bit and then attach them where they need to go. Next is a little short bracket to support the middle of the shelf. Definitely want to get this into a stud if you can. And this is one of the few places that I will use those plastic anchors. I'll put one into the stud and one I'll use a plastic anchor just to keep it from twisting. But the weight's going to be supported by the screw in the stud. Now I just have to put up the brackets for the other two shelves, one at the top on either side, and then we'll measure and cut them to length. I have all the brackets installed, now we have to measure for the length of the shelves. So we need to measure across like this. Don't just measure from the drywall to the side of the cabinet, you have to account for the screw heads and the brackets. Ideally you want to use a folding ruler like this to take your measurements. If you don't have one, check your father's toolbox, or your grandfather's toolbox. These things are great for taking inside measurements. You open it up, it doesn't droop like a regular rule. Put it in, slide out the extension. You can measure from screw to screw and get your measurements. You want to check in the front and in the back 
just in case your walls are a little bit out of square so you can make sure that you cut your shelves they're going to fit. You might also want to take a framing square and check your corners to see if they're square or not. If you don't have a framing square, um, I'll put a link in the description where I picked this one up. If you don't have a framing square, you can use a hardcover book or something like that or even one of the shelves that came with your unit. Just stick it in the corner just to see if you're really out of square so you know how to make your cuts for your shelves. shelves are cut to length, just set them in place, and there's holes in the bracket, you can put a screw or two in, um, just so they won't come out, they're not going to slide forward, but it's always good to be safe, put a screw in there. Remember, don't use a drill or an impact gun, use a hand screwdriver to put the screws in so you don't strip them out. Next, we have to put on our brackets for the clothes hangers. The next step in our closet makeover is to install the rods. You have these brackets that go one here on the side of the unit, the other side on the wall. We're going to install them in the wall the same way we did the brackets using the easy anchors or if you're lucky enough to hit a stud. If you do have to cut these, make sure that you slide them apart and cut the ends that do not have a little hole in the bottom because that locks into the bracket. So if you have to cut it, cut the end without a hole in it. Full disclosure, I did take a peek at the instructions, just a little bit, didn't read the whole thing. They say to take these brackets and mount them an eighth of an inch back from the front of the unit. You might want to check that out before you start screwing them in because it could put your hanger too close to the front of the closet and it may hit your door. So take a minute and just get a full size hanger. Check out where you want the rod to be make your marks and put them where you want them to be. It's not going to affect the performance of anything if you mount them back a little bit further. So I've decided to put all of these brackets 10 inches off the back wall. Um, this melamine is kind of hard to mark on. You might want to get yourself one of these uh, Milwaukee pens. They work great. They'll mark on just about anything. I'm going to center it, as I said, 10 inches off the back wall. And when you put these on, make sure you don't put them too close to the shelves. Give yourself a little bit of room so the hanger will be able to go on without banging into the shelf. into place. All right, this was a pretty easy closet makeover. No longer am I going to have to hear my daughter saying fix this, build that. Great idea for organizing your closet. Last step is to put in our shelves and they're adjustable. This unit also comes with drawers. I'll put a link to that in the description also. And I was lucky enough that when I cut the shelves, I had enough left over that I could make a few extra shelves. So let me uh, put all my daughter's clothes back and we'll see what it looks like when it's filled. I hope you found this video helpful and you were able to get some closet organization ideas from it. Maybe you'll take a minute to hit the thumbs up, maybe subscribe. When I put out future videos, you'll be the first to be notified. I think this turned out great. It's very sturdy. There's a lot more room. It's better organized. There's even some extra space here. She may want to go to the mall soon. <sighs>
Thank you.